SpaceX is pushing Raptor to a new level. If you place all three versions, Raptor 1, 2, and 3, side by side, you can instantly tell which one is the latest. That's right. The most obvious difference lies in their appearance, but that doesn't mean the internal structure is as simple as it looks. So, how did SpaceX transform Raptor from this complex system into a more optimized engine in just a few years? Let's dive into these groundbreaking improvements. Designing the Raptor engine wasn't just about building a rocket, it was about rewriting the rules of rocket propulsion. From day one, Elon Musk and his team faced a major challenge, the tangled maze of pipes in Raptor 5-1. To simplify this engine, scientists had to go back to its mechanical blueprints, reorganize the entire piping system, develop new technologies, master the full-flow staged combustion process, and completely redesign the engine structure from the inside out. These breakthroughs paved the way for Raptor 2 and the latest V3, which abandoned the complexity of earlier designs in favor of a more streamlined and powerful engine. But getting there wasn't easy. Each iteration required extensive research, rigorous testing, and continuous refinements to balance simplicity with top-tier performance. Despite a lot of challenges in designing, it's incredible how quickly SpaceX made that happen. According to a tweet from SpaceX, the Raptor 1 sea level version delivered 185 tons of thrust and weighed in at 2,080 kilograms. But when they upgraded to Raptor 2, the results were jaw-dropping. The engine weight dropped to just 1,630 kilograms, yet the thrust skyrocketed to 230 tons force, a 24% boost compared to Raptor 1. And then came the game changer, Raptor 3. Released in August 2024, this model is even more mind-blowing. Despite weighing only 1,525 kilograms, it can generate an astonishing 280 tons of thrust. That's a huge leap in power and efficiency. The reduced weight not only reflects advancements in materials and design, but also hints at a simpler, more streamlined exterior, though the internal structure is now more complex than ever. So how did they do it? When SpaceX upgraded from Raptor 1 to Raptor 2, engineers streamlined the design by cutting down on plumbing and sensors, even combining many valves into valve plates. This simplified the engine significantly. But with Raptor 3, the big focus was removing the protective thermal layer to save weight. Yes, the next-gen Raptor engine doesn't need it anymore. At least, that's the plan. However, this layer is essential for protecting the engine from extreme temperatures during launch and re-entry. So, how can they get rid of it without risking damage to the engine? Elon Musk explained on X that by eliminating and integrating enough secondary structures and small parts, it's possible to protect the engine locally without relying on the heat shield. He shared this during a tour of Starbase with Everyday Astronaut. Essentially, everything is now cooled regeneratively. With no heat shield, the Raptor engine is exposed, meaning it has to have cooling systems running through all parts of the engine. It might seem simple on the outside, but inside, it's a lot more complex. Even the pre-burner and gas manifolds have cooling systems integrated. All those extra parts you'd typically see on the side, they're gone. And it's not just the heat shield that's been removed. They also eliminated numerous bolted and welded joints, especially the bolted ones, which were a top priority to remove. But simplifying the structure isn't just about cutting parts. It's about paving the way for a more powerful, more reliable Raptor 3. Many assume that simplifying an engine would compromise its performance. In reality, SpaceX has only streamlined the exterior, while the internal structure has become more complex, ensuring efficiency is maintained or even improved. So how do we simplify the structure while boosting efficiency? Well, as I mentioned, Raptor 3 delivers an impressive 280 tons of thrust, a huge jump from the V2 version. Just to put it in perspective, imagine a four-ton elephant. Raptor 3 can push 70 elephants, while V2 could only push 57. The key to this improvement lies in the pressure inside the combustion chamber. According to Musk, Raptor 3's combustion chamber is built to handle extreme heat 
hotter than molten lava. As the pressure inside the combustion chamber increases, the propellants, liquid methane and liquid oxygen, are forced to burn more efficiently. This results in higher temperatures and pressures, leading to more energy being released during combustion. More specifically, Raptor 2 pushes temperatures in the combustion chamber up to around 3,600 Kelvin, about 6,000 Fahrenheit, which is already crazy hot. With Raptor 3, SpaceX is taking things up a notch. New cooling systems and tougher materials mean the chamber can handle high temperatures, around 4,100 Kelvin, about 7,000 Fahrenheit, and maybe even go higher. This heat is so intense it can actually burn diamonds. That's insane. Following Newton's third law of motion, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. When exhaust gases are expelled at high speeds, they create a thrust that pushes the rocket in the opposite direction. This enhanced thrust allows the rocket to carry heavier payloads, reach higher velocities, and take on even more ambitious space missions. Behind this capability is a key innovation in Raptor 3, internalizing secondary flow paths. Essentially, SpaceX has reworked how propellants and gases move inside the engine. This helps optimize fuel and oxidizer mixing, leading to better efficiency and performance. But of course, there's a catch. It also makes the design and manufacturing process way more complex, since every internal pathway has to be engineered with extreme precision to withstand unforgiving heat and pressures. Additionally, SpaceX's upgrades to Raptor 3 aren't just about power, they're also about production speed and cost efficiency. Back in the Raptor 1 days, building a single engine took around 11 days. With Raptor 2, that was slashed to just two days, and eventually they got it down to one engine per day. That's a notable improvement, all thanks to design simplifications. But Raptor 3? We're talking about the possibility of producing dozens of engines per day. A pace you'd expect in automotive manufacturing, not rocketry. At the 2024 Barron Investment Conference in New York, Gwyn Shotwell said, We just passed 400 total launches on Falcon, and I would not be surprised if we fly 400 Starship launches in the next four years. With such an ambitious goal in mind, Star Factory is poised for a breakthrough in its production process, ensuring a steady supply of Raptor 3 engines and accelerating SpaceX's path to achieving its targets. Assuming SpaceX needs four Starships to achieve its goal of 100 launches per year and that each launch requires 39 Raptor 3 engines, 6 for Starship and 33 for Super Heavy, plus the possibility of some engines malfunctioning and needing replacement, the company would need to produce about 200 to 250 engines per year. If they can maintain the production rate of two Raptor 3 engines every day, it will be a remarkable milestone in SpaceX's Starship development journey. Moreover, mass production brings significant cost savings. The price of a Raptor 2 engine has already dropped to $1 to $2 million, and with further scaling, it could go as low as $200,000 per engine. That means the art of the state design of the Raptor 3 could reduce production costs by up to 10% compared to the Raptor 2. To keep costs low and accelerate production, SpaceX may utilize some of the most advanced metal 3D printing technologies available. Elon Musk all but confirmed that 3D printing, or additive manufacturing AM, played a big role in the latest Raptor engine. When responding to a tweet from Steve Jurgensen, an early SpaceX investor, he stated, Indeed, it is not widely understood that SpaceX has the most advanced 3D metal printing technology in the world. While SpaceX hasn't revealed the exact details of how AM shaped the Raptor's design, Jurgensen's insight suggests it was a giant leap. It's not just SpaceX, the entire space industry is going all in on metal 3D printing AM. Companies like AMCM are using massive multi-laser printers to create single-piece rocket thrust chambers, while Ariane Group is leveraging AM to build heat exchangers for its Ariane 6 rocket and parts for communication satellites. Last year, Intuitive Machines Odysseus made history by landing on the moon with a 3D printed engine nozzle component from Siaki. And in March, 
Ursa Major launched its Hadley engine, which can be built in just days thanks to AM technology. With breakthroughs like these, metal printing is quickly becoming a major advance for space exploration. We have seen the Starship Block 2 in action during Flight 7, powered by six Raptor 2 engines. There is a possibility that future flights will replace them with Raptor 3 engines for testing purposes. Eventually, the Raptor 3 will be officially used on the Block 3, which is designed to reach a towering 150 metres in total height, 25 metres taller than Block 2, featuring an 80.2 metre super heavy booster and a 69.8 metre starship. With its massive size, it will undoubtedly need the power of the Raptor 3 to function efficiently and achieve its full potential, or perhaps even a more powerful version in the future. Last year, Elon Musk hinted at future Raptor engines exceeding 330 tons of thrust. Right now, Raptor 3 delivers 280 tons force. But with Musk's proposed boost from October, it could hit 300 tons force. Reaching 330 tons force, however, will likely require the Raptor 4. While we haven't seen Raptor 4 yet, based on the evolution from Raptor 1 to Raptor 3, it's almost certain to be more compact and efficient. If we consider that Raptor 5, 1 weighed 2,080 kilograms and VT 600 kilograms, Raptor 4 could be around 1,500 kilograms. With 330 tons force of thrust, that would give it a thrust to weight ratio TWR of 220, an incredible leap, especially compared to the Merlin 1D's TWR of 180. So what's all this power for? Well, for starters, Raptor 4 could be a game changer for NASA's Artemis 3 mission in 2027. SpaceX needs serious thrust to fuel deep space missions, and that's where Starship variants like the tanker and HLS come in. The tanker alone has to haul 1,900 tonnes of fuel for in-orbit refuelling, a crucial step for long-haul space travel. And to pull that off, you need some serious power. That's where the Raptor 4 version changes the game. With six vacuum engines on Starship and the Super Heavy booster delivering a combined 9,000 tons of thrust, launches are about to get safer, smoother, and more efficient than ever. These advancements in technology are not only pushing the boundaries of space travel, but they also bring us closer to returning to the moon. It's been 53 years since Apollo 17. 53 years without a single human footprint on the lunar surface. Hard to believe especially when our technology today is light years ahead. Yet no space agency has managed to repeat what was once achieved with 20th century rockets. That's why NASA and SpaceX are pushing full speed ahead, refining engines like Raptor 3 and Raptor 4 to bring us back to the moon. But this is just the beginning because the real challenge isn't the moon, it's Mars. And that journey is still at least a decade away. In short, with everything Raptor 3 and Raptor 4 bring to the table, the future looks exciting. And that's where we'll wrap things up for today. So, which engine do you think will power Starship's journey to Mars? Raptor 3, Raptor 4, or maybe even Raptor 5? Drop your thoughts in the comments. That's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.